you know, you go out and you get caught on a, a three prongs fence. Yeah. I've stuck a foot down a badger set before in a yard. You know, there's all these things that you just don't get when What happened when you st- st- put your foot in the badger? I got set? chased by a badger. <laughs> <laughs> Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer podcast. I wrote a lot of different names that people don't realise. All right, we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give let's give let's give Keller a good reason to put pixelation on your face on this one, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be uh, anywhere else. Um, the weather's getting colder out there, but that's a good opportunity to go painting, ain't it? Um, if you want more love on that note, get the Television app. Free download iPhone, Android for all of your street culture, sports, and then some. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Inside the house, South End is most definitely, definitely present right now. Not only part of the South End City Jam, but an original from those neck of the woods. Pure damage, absolute carnage. From 2000s onwards, it's stir. You PC Howie, my brother. Nice to meet you, mate. <sighs> what a pleasure. Cheers. Thanks and for having us on. No, thank you. You travelled, haven't you? It's, I mean, it's, it's been a day for you already, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just been out uh, riding the lines for other reasons, but yeah, mm. ended up here. Mm. Uh, what are you seeing on the lines at the moment? Because obviously, you know, you don't come into London often. Uh, what? Sorry, what did you say? What, what am I what, seeing on yeah, the lines? Yeah, what are you seeing on the lines? You, uh, uh, anything of interest? Yeah, I mean, it's still still nice and battered coming through Hackney Way mm. and all, all around there. All the sort of regular names, ATG, all them lot, mm. everyone. Still there, aren't they? Yeah, still there. Still present. Isn't that funny that uh, G- Graf lives on through the, the trials and turmoils of, of life? It's, it's often nice to see something that's quite nostalgic, even in the smallest period of time, isn't it? Sure, yeah. it's uh, There's something nice about a heavily graffitied area, even if it's slightly fucked and uh, it, like it's just bits of it creeping past the top still of the mm. buff. I still don't know, I still like the look of it. Mm. Yes, yeah, so totally. Yeah. It's romantic, isn't it? It's just this idea of it was there, somebody was there, something. It was an, It's an echo. For oh, sure. It's an echo of something, of somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love all genres of graffiti. So from tags, stickers, all the way through to the finer art sort of style of stuff, I just love it all. I, I, I emphasised rather rather harshly at the start the uh, the uh, carnage of Stir, but you guys of its time in the early noughties, late nights were forced to be reckoned with. Uh, yeah, late nineties, um, yeah, and early two thousands was when I was sort of mainly doing steel and that sort of stuff. Mad yeah. still. Yeah, a bit. There was a few people doing a bit more than me at the time, but yeah, I was there in that era. Mm. I mean, there was a presence as well, like magazines and such. You know, we were just saying, actually, before we got on, because of the the graphism, if you're listening and not watching, prominent on the wall here, you don't get that kind of attention from from a, from a, uh, a loyal audience like, like you would in graphism or magazines back in the day, would you? Yeah, so with the, with the rise of the internet, graffiti has become a bit, uh, it's nice in a way because it's easy accessible. Um, but back in the day when you used to share flicks, send photos to graphicism, places like that, mm. it was an event like when you got your got the graphicism come out, you had a flick through and you see your panels in there or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, there's something a little bit special that you don't really get no more. Okay, you get it online, but I don't know. It's just, it seems seems a bit more... People just scroll past, it's just normal. Where back then it was like, if you did a good colour panel, it would just hit and it would be like, everybody would be talking about it. Um, I don't know whether that's still the case. I'm a little bit out of the loop in that sort of thing, but that's how it felt back then anyway. Yeah, and a level of exclusivity. Like, not everyone needs to know about it. Like, it's clear that from 
your guys' era and earlier that Graf looked amazing, but there wasn't. It was more taboo, wasn't it? Uh, you know, it was it was an in crowd thing. You can't just be into it. Yeah, it was definitely a subculture where, um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't mainstream at all. Really, you had the odd little sort of snippet of secularism creeping in, but it was it was firmly underground then. Really, everybody knew each other within their circles of damage, mm. um, and yeah, it was fun times. Really, mm. like really nostalgic fun times um you, you mentioned before we went on that you had a, a, a bunch of different names that you went under for for training we won't indulge too much on them obviously because you like the pretty face you don't want pixelation on this one <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you you had a bunch of pseudonyms that you would um yeah so my, mainly known for stir like towards the end of like me painting steel i was writing stir um i don't i don't really mind I, like i say it's a long time ago, I don't think I'm going to get nicked, but I wrote cabs, cab, stomp, um, yeah, and then mainly stir. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Uh, and in really early times, Eps and Epso as well. Um, so. Wow. You, you always tell the hallmarks of a great writer when they've got, and there's a bunch of you out there, that still cr keep the versatility that you have on your own letters with other letters. I always find that still, it, even now, it's a conundrum. When, when seeing how you guys, how you're able to do translate it to different letters, yeah. So I, I think I, I don't know what it is, but I think people who have cut their teeth on illegal graffiti, it's the stance of the letters, the the sort of feel and the aggression of the letters. I think travels through. So even if you're doing legal hall of fames or whatever, the letters still have an element of realness. Mm. Uh, I, I think, not always, but I think some sometimes when people have skipped that step uh, of the illegal, illegal they, they let us just lack something. There's just not that. I don't know. I can't, can't quite put my finger on it. But you, you've got to have real letters, real style, real, mm. real lean, real flow, mm. that sort of stuff. It is, isn't it? What is that thing? Is it ang it must, you know, transfer all of anxiety or, you know, just intensity... I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's just. I guess it's a peer-to-peer -peer thing as well, where you know you're learning from people who are elite in illegal activity at the time. Your idols are people who are doing that sort of graph, and it, so even though I mean I still hit the old cheeky track or whatever, but even though I'm pretty much retired from steel, never say never, but. Yeah, <laughs> um, I I like to think my letters have still got that illegal element to it, like mm. the, the look. Do you think also it's the use of space? Because when you're dealing with illegal stuff, you've really got to, you've got to, you've got to suss out a, 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 the space you're working with pretty quick, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. So like track size, that sort of thing. Obviously, walls vary from small to big. You know. Or, I always used to plan before I went, I'd always spot a wall. Yeah. I wouldn't I really would I just turn up on a track and then suddenly find a wall and think I'm going to dub it. Mm. I would always spot the wall, make a plan, yeah. think what I'm going to do on it, then go and do it. And like obviously like trains, you just do an outline with the bottom cut off yeah. and it fits on any train. Yeah, so yeah. you don't have to plan too much for that. <laughs> at this point, I must say, do not try this at home. It's Cowboys and Indians, nice little story. Nothing ever happens, not around here, not in this house. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Um, dude, uh, I, I say all of this because it does bring me nicely to your versatility. Dude, <laughs> flow, bounce, this different... I mean, there's not one technique that I haven't seen in your pieces, dude. Like, you're fucking... No fear, like you're. It just looks like you. Mu every every piece you do, it, to me, it appears you you've mastered it. You mastered it ages ago. It's that kind of thing. Well, it's. Uh, I wouldn't say I've mastered it, like, but it, if you ever get to the point where you feel like you've mastered it, I guess you're then like, there's something wrong. You know, yeah. there's always like a goal that you keep setting yourself. Mm. You know, so. You, you get to a point you'll like it and then often often after a you at the time you'll think i love that piece mm. and then next year you look at it and think actually i could do a lot better than that or i could tweak that i could move it forward in mm. some sort of way mm -hmm. i think 
without naming any names, but I do think there was a lot of writers, UK based, that I've aspired to be like when I was younger and they were my idols. And some of them have got to a point where they've got to a level of where they're happy at being at. Mm. And then they just sit there and don't seem to push it any further. Yes. And I, I just never want to be that person. I always want to be pushing beyond, like, a constant battle with myself to do better than I've previously done. Okay, so I've got two thoughts on that one. So firstly, so do you think it's, do you think it's like a high-level complacency that, that perhaps they feel fulfilled that they can't do, they couldn't possibly push anymore because anything they're pushing is a rehash of something they did in the 90s or some shit? I think there's a lot of elements to play. One is, like, life. When you get a bit older, kids, family and stuff, you haven't got time to sketch and innovate so much. Um, but I think also is a lot of my pieces, if I'm honest, I enjoy the last, like, five minutes when I feel like I look at it and I feel like it's coming together. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, like, the big wild-style-looking things, they're an absolute chore. The actual pleasure in painting them sometimes isn't there. The mm. pleasure is the finished product. And I think people just want to enjoy what they're doing, which I can see the logic in it. So then they sort of bring it back to where they're comfortable so that they can have fun at the wall. Mm. Whereas I'm happy to go through hell at the wall mm. as long as I'm happy at the end. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that's what creates... <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean, brother. <laughs> but that, 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 that take, that's a lot of energy, isn't it? That's, that's arguably, would, would you say you have fun painting? Yeah, so I, I did a chrome the other day. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You can't go for the best ever thing you've painted mm. every single time you paint. It's just not possible. It's not possible, is it? No. Um, but I still like to make sure that I'm always trying. Mm. So if I'm doing a chrome, it's a lot simpler, but then you kind of switch your, 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 your thinking from uh, complexity to how clean can I get it or how, how thick is my outline got to be? Mm. Like what is it going to stand out? Um, in terms of like, um, like um, what do you call it? Contrast. Mm -hmm. You know, is is your outline color gonna set off against your field color? Mm. There's still things that you have to think about, even though it's simpler. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I always try. I never turn up and think I'm just gonna do something throw away. Mm. I, I, it's not in me. It's interesting you say that because the, the use of space again and also even your block letters, the way you make them bounce and stretch and morph. And, um, can you ever get a definitive piece that covers every single area of... Never. Is that part of the puzzle? <laughs> I think that's part of the thing that stops you being bored. Like, like I went to Leeds um, probably a couple of years ago now and... I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna, there's a massive wall in Leeds. I thought, I'm just going to do the biggest blockbuster. That's it. Like, I, I, I think a Mux beat me, mm -hmm. but I think other than the Mux one, I can't think of a bigger blockbuster. So, yeah, shout out to a Muck. Um, but, yeah, I just went there and I spent three days on ladders and absolutely killed myself. Um, or you can go and do a wild style, or you can think, oh, I'll do a character, mm. or you can go and do a dub, or you can just... You know, it, it, it's so vast, um, it, or you, you can, rather than laying off for a rest, you can just do something different. Simple. Because some people put too much on science. Like, it's got to be... Got to be like this, got to be like that. You mustn't use this, you mustn't use that. Mm. I, I break all rules. I'll do mm. any means necessary to get what I want done on the wall. Mm. Like, yeah, everything. Oh, good. Well, let's go. Let's take it back. Let's take it back to our human spine. When did, when did it all begin, brother? Tell us the story. Uh, so, yeah, I was 11. So, a long, yeah, we're talking like over 30 years ago. And um, I was in my bedroom looking out the window, and my brother and his mate were uh, doing a dub in my estate. I used to live in a right rough area of South End. And uh, yeah, I just looked out and thought, 
I want to have a go at some of that. And yeah, the rest, my brother ended up growing out of it and I just ended up carrying on. What's your brother say now? Yeah, yeah, he's quite, he, he's just like, who would have thought that? Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's, a, he's just like in normal sort of life, paying bills and doing the normal thing, kids and all that. And he's just like, it's mad how just such a little spark can end up being a lifelong thing for somebody, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Who are your influences coming up in the game? Uh, so lo- locally to my area, um, Essex has always been really rich in in, in good writers. Uh, you had like Busker, Skyer, who mm-hmm. moved up this mm-hmm. sort of way. Uh, loads of people, AC4, Range, um, and it, you know, up this sort of way was Urge, Keane, yeah. all of the East London lot. Yeah. Um, Syme, yeah. Syme as well, T. Syme. Yeah, Syme. Um, yeah, all, all, all of the sort of mainly Dagenham really around that sort of area. But you had like people at the same sort of time as like Nema, Arrow. Yeah. That's controversial because they you don't get along. But both <laughs> of them. Them two names in the yeah, But both, both, both of them have been massive influences yeah, on me, yeah. I would say. Big up both of them. Big up Arrow. Yeah, big for up, sure. Big up Nemo, yeah, man. Uh, and yeah, like people in the in the same sort of era, like Chang Scholar, I used to do loads of track sides around there. Crazy. Yeah, uh, all them guys, obviously DDS, all the, mm. all the London crews. Um, but yeah, anybody doing illegal activity back in the day, that was the route really. Mm. Um, and then, now I do a lot of characters and that sort of stuff, but I never, it's only in the last few years, I always was into just letters only. There's sort of been various sort of, ebbs and waves of, of the scene in Essex. So you've got like Chelmsford, which was Essex Rockers mm. and all them early guys. And you've got sort of AC4 range and all them lot from around my way, Neil uh, Caddy, um, people like that. And and sort of like you'd had different generations like smash it for a time and then there's had been periods where Actually, it was like me and two other people writing in the whole of our area mm. for a while. And then we started smashing track sides and the rest of it. And then suddenly another generation started. Because they would see it. Because they would see it. And so it's kind of like ebbed and, uh, uh, as the time has gone on. There's been periods where there was a lot of intense stuff going on and then periods where not so much going on. Mm. And we, but we've always been there. Right, right through. Talk to me about those intense times. Talk to me about how. What was it like in your first time getting on trackside or getting in a yard? So, I was I was in my school uniform with uh, arms and uh, disco. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to arms and disco. Yeah. Uh, yeah, went Shenfield. Uh, done my first panel with them. Um, how was that? Yeah, it was it was mad. Like I was hooked from then on. I saw my panel. Um, spent the night in a bush, um, and I don't know. It's, it's just a special, special moment, really. It just sort of triggered something in mm. me, and I think it's affirmation, really, from people who were a bit older than me at the time, who were saying, like, if you can do that now, like, mm. you're going to be really good when you you you're uh, further on in your mm. years, and that sort of stuff sort of encouraged you into it. Um, and the rest is history. Isn't it funny that that? I mean, some would call it like peer motivation, peer pressure. I don't know. It's funny how that actually the littlest of words, that littlest of encouragement, where you didn't have encouragement in that area in life before, all of a sudden becomes the key factor. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I grew up on a, a council estate. I never really had uh, much when I was growing up. Um, bit of a troubled family life and then meeting people who so my my first person who who did that was my art teacher or my teacher in junior school I drew a picture of the Sydney Opera House she was like that's amazing um and yeah she put it on the wall and I, I felt good mm. and I guess that same feeling of feeling good it, it, when people who were writers were telling me similar stuff that was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock this. I'm gonna do it. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so you always had the art gene in you. Yeah, I, I look, I, my family is quite arty. Really? Uh, so yeah. my mum his, teaches history of art. Um, my dad used to paint portraits, and my granddad dabbled a little bit as well. So I've wow. always been around. And my brother started writing 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so yeah. It all culminated into one big. Yeah, I've always Stir always been around. <laughs> Stir monster. My, my boy writes mon. Really? Yeah. So to together we're monster. <laughs> oh, tight. <laughs> oh, big up mon. Come on. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, there is. It's it's quite a treasure trove when talking about graph, and it's it, it's the institution of it and how important your peers are, and what the what the acclaims lead to in context of the overall scene. It's funny, like people coming on podcast, talking about all these different uh, moments in time mm -hmm. that led them to do certain things. It is almost like its own education, isn't it, of a, of a genre? For sure. I mean, you used to go out... Used to go out racking, rack some paint. Then, like I say, before the era of the internet, we would hear someone's done like a track. There would be, I don't know, like a Chang thing or a Scholar thing mm. or anyone from back Steez or any of them guys. And then we would hear where it is and then it would mm. be like, I really want to see that. And like a Christmas we'll, thing and you're yeah, just like, where, the, where right, are the flicks? <laughs> bunk on a train, uh, the old slam door era. Yeah. Um, and then... Yeah, we'd track down, run down the track in the daytime, take photos of it, go back. And, and yeah, these sort of moments are often remember years and times by a graph. Mm. You know, like uh, it'd be, oh, that time when so-and-so did that or so-and-so did that. Do you think the notoriety in a, in a writer is often more important than the tech, the, the technical ability of a writer? Uh, both, both, both are commendable. Like so, technical ability is good, but also just energy to get up. Uh, both are equal. I, I, I suppose I respect the person who can do illegal graph and do it well uh, more than someone who just does illegal graph. Um, but I probably I still respect someone who does illegal graph. More than someone who's legal who can just do it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because they got all the things against it. Well, it's not yeah. really graphic. Look, technically, it's not really graphic, is it? Yeah, come on. I disagree. I Talk think. to me. Go on. Uh, I'd say it, it's still graph. It's just not, yeah, it's just not lived, like I was saying earlier, about the people who have come from that hardcore element of graffiti. There's just something missing in a lot of the pieces that you see. But that, does that undermine them if, if everything is graph? It's playing devil's advocate here because I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Um, there comes a point yeah. where, regardless of ability, when somebody gets up that much, hmm. then, yeah, they deserve all fame. It's all, true, all, isn't all it? All the fame. <laughs> but, 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 but does the, is that graph more uh, as much? Is that in equal measure graph as you know the more uh, legal? No, that's more graph. It is more graph, isn't it? It's more yeah. graph than, yeah. it's <laughs> it's more more graph than graph. all the graph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see how I was going with that one. It's, you know, it's, it's a constant comment. Uh, it's a comment debate on, 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 the, on the channel. So do leave a message. Tell us what you think. Is, is, is there more graph than normal graph or can we all just graph along, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's like 10 foot is another guy. Like, absolutely. It, I, I, it amazes me. We've got our theories of how it gets up. Some of the people say he's a lorry driver and he goes around. We haven't got a clue. We're just like, how are you in all of these obscure places mm. with tags? I'll go somewhere completely random with my family and there'll be a 10-foot hit. And mm. I just think there's something like really... Uh, yeah, it, it deserves respect if to it, get up that much. Total and utter commanding of respect, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, it's, and a simple idea... I mean, this is the thing with graph, isn't it? Like, how much can we do in a short space of time? And then when we get to that time frame, quadruple it. It's, it's a real simple act, but it's about applying. And it be quite a challenging thing for anybody, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, like, sometimes it rains. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you, you know, you go out and you get caught on a, a three-pronged fence. Yeah. I've stuck a foot down a badger set before in a yard. You know, there's all these things that you just don't get when What happened when you put your foot in the badger? Yeah, I got chased by a badger. <laughs> <laughs> so, checklist. What, what, what could... Be easy enough to believe. This is what could happen. <laughs> Was it on the list? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's loads of mad stories like that where just wow. like... 
crazy, crazy things happen. Brother, that's hilarious. I've never heard that before. <laughs> but it, it makes, it, it, again, it just makes that side of the scene all the more richer because there's just so many more funny events that come along with it. It's not just the the hits and the tags and the track sides. It's the whole story around what happened is always more eventful than turning up at a Hall of Fame and mm. painting a piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me another funny, another funny story. That that was fucking great. Um, yeah, funny stories. I mean, like bumping into people in yards. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, a few times. Um, yeah, I was on a. There was a guy who used to write Rambo. I've always wanted to meet this guy. Yeah, Rambo. I remember hit, Rambo. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know who he is. If he has any other names or whatever, but I was getting into South Harrow, and I was cutting the the fence. And it was like ping, ping. And it was like a comedy sketch. Like when I cut it, I could hear a second ping somewhere else. And he's cutting the hole in the fence further along. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, the, same. <laughs> like, exactly the same time. Yeah, exactly the same time. And then like we worked oh, out right. someone else is here. Like they're cutting the fence too. And then sort of like he's clocked us, start running across the track. And then we're like, we right, we right. And he's like, and then we end up just going in together. But that, that happened four four times. I've bumped into other writers in yards, and we've just painted. It's, it's... That makes me quite unnerving. Makes me feel quite quite unnerving. The idea that you, I guess it's I guess it's the mentality of like if you've done it, if you've done that activity often enough, you're kind of you're dissolved of like any anxiety or fear. Or if something like that happens, then it's kind of like. Water for ducks, but it's just something new in it compared yeah. to what we normally do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that can't ever get trivialized, can it? No, uh, another, another time uh, I could, I was coming down the track and I could see the traffic light with like the, the red light up the track, and then I could see people crossing the track. And then, we, like my mates who I was with, they were like, let's go, it's like, you know, and I was like, hang on, I don't think they're like just they're clouds, they look like writers. And there was this sort of debate, how do we know they're writers? And then I thought about Star Wars when it when they go whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. And so I did a whoop, whoop. And then, of course, they write, they knew what it was, and they did a whoop, whoop back. And then we walked down, and it was, yeah, that was... I got goosebumps when you said that, bro. That's <laughs> fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, so we walked down, and there was um, some Italian guys. I forget what they write. Uh, it was Nemo, Hill, um, and The... And wow. then we ended up doing, I don't know how many panels got done that night, but it was a lot. Probably 30 or 40 panels, I'd say, got done in the yard that night. 30 or 40? Yeah, there was there was five of us, and there was about f- five, six of them as well, yeah. And I, I did two panels. Most people did two to three panels. It just got trashed. That's a lot of paint, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> How did you get all that lot in? Big bags, mate, big bags. And then the very next week... Um, went to another depot. I won't say where, just in case anyone does have to. Uh, we don't talk about that stuff on here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then bumped into the same people again the following weekend. Stop it. Yeah, so there was the place we were painting. It was it had cameras, but they weren't manned, so you had to go balaclavered up. And we were painting a whole car, and then I turned around, and suddenly there's an extra two balaclavas. I'm like, what the f- and yeah, it was the same the same people again. Oh <laughs> it's in an all absorbing world, isn't it? It's like it completely immerses you. It becomes yeah. your day daily, like every single day, something else. Yeah, yeah, that's just totally what we live for. It was just literally, yeah, painting. Like that's that's it. That was our life. We got out of bed in the morning. Used to smoke smoke a bit of weed, score some weed, meet up with the guys. Go round around on the train, spot track sides, spot graph, plan yard missions. That's that's what we did. Is it sustainable up past a certain age? Like, can you? Well, there's a few guys that were writing trains when I when I was young, and I wouldn't say they were like prolific like they used to be. But there's definitely still a few people from that era are still hitting some trains. And not living that normal lifestyle of nine to five or anything? Uh, yeah, a couple of, a couple of them are, are, like got kids and all that. Um, uh, a couple of them are literally just single, free spirits still, never really settled down and 
Still smashing it. I always find those characters interesting, particularly as you get older and life may stay reasonably, as you were saying, carefree, footloose, no you know, commitments or relationships. But everyone else's does. Everyone else's life does. And that, that could be quite taxing mentally for anybody that wants to try and keep a hold of that youthful sport. Yeah, there's... there's so there was... Uh, within our crew... The, uh, I don't know if I should go there. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping that pixelation off, baby. <laughs> uh, you, the cat, the, there was kind of like a little bit of... Um, disappointment from people who were still painting when other people had stopped and moved on and done other things. There was a bit of resentment in some places where, uh, yeah, they were sad that the the crew disbanded in a way, you know? Um, right. Which, yeah. It yeah. happens, yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, but now we we link everybody back from that area we still talk to, and, and that that disappointment isn't there anymore. And it's kind of like we're all getting old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The beers for the afternoon, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I, I rate that. I rate that there's I rate that there's two worlds. I mean, like <sighs> graffiti is of an age now, where. You could be like super old looking and the last person on the planet that you'd think kinged a certain period of time. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, most people, uh, not most, I mean, obviously, like the kids that are do, doing still these days, they've got half the time that we used to have in yards. Mm. Like they've got a lot more security to deal with. For sure. The stuff that they're they're doing is just, Done under under pressure, under time. Mm. Uh, still gets you still get some really clean stuff as well, but um, it seems a lot less frequent. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of the people who sort of are doing really clean artwork, they're all got grey hair. Like when you look at anyone who's making a living out of it, they're all they're all going grey. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 it's interesting. Yeah, 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 no, I, I do know what you mean. Like because you know, I was talking to Saya, um, big up Saya, come on. Um, legend in, in the European graph scene, uh, Mr. Holkar, no less. Um, 500 Holkars and still doing it. And, and I said to him, I was like, dude, like, how are you, how? Like, you, you guys of an age, you know what I mean? But but you find a way. And I said, well, there is there is this thing, it's a bit like a skateboarder, isn't it? It's like the older you get, the better you get it. But your, yeah. bo your body's kind of saying, no, no, stop. And uh, just going back to the... Uh, Going back to the notor notoriety thing, what levels did you have to Im implement in to keep in your position? Uh, I don't. Was there a level of aggression to to how you used to operate? Uh, to, to me, to me, my, all all my motivation was was local for me. Mm -hmm. Like it was nice bumping into the odd person and look, I've seen their stuff and I really respect it. But the the whole drive for me was just. It was my core team of mates and I cared what they thought. And it was kind of was like the rest of the graph scene kind of went on and happened and I just was focused on us and our little bit. Mm. Um, so, so notoriety was important to me among the people I knew. It wasn't so much important to people that were outside our circles. I didn't really care. Yeah, That's, that's normal gang culture though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Um, but it's still still nice when you, you bump into someone down Camden or somewhere like that and they'll say, what do you write? And then you they go, oh, I see this, I see that or whatever. You know, it's yeah. it, it, people say they don't care, but they do. And it, it does feel good when yeah. people have seen your shit. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Judge, you know Fucking right, rightly so, man. I mean, again, just going back to, you know, you're just looking down the Instagram, man, like, you know, the, it's almost like you fast forward to to the present day and and just the the intent in the way that you're painting now and it just goes back to uh, the jam the uh, South End City Jam, mm -hmm. which is where I guess a lot of focus has been mm -hmm. um, as of late and uh, you're one of the co-coordinators, right? Yeah, yeah, me me and Ecto, um, we we 
basically organised the jam um, along with Southend City Council and a few other sponsors. Uh, one of the sponsors actually nicked me back in the day for painting on their their line. <laughs> Now who's laughing? <laughs> and now, now they're giving me money to put on a graph of jam. But anyway. That's incredible. Um, do they know this? No. They do now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we um, so after, after my illegal spate in like, you know, them early years, I spent the rest of my, my time traveling Europe, going to different graph jams, mostly with Ecto. Mm -hmm. um, Big up Ecto. All and, time. Uh, Dumb finger. Yeah, and, and UPC crew, all of our crew, we mm -hmm. sort of formed this this crew, which is sort of like international. We've got people from all over the world, part of this crew, and and we've become a, a family. And then basically just graph holidayed from city to city, and it got to a point where COVID happened, and I thought, you know what, like as much as I've liked travelling around mm. um, and going to these things, it, it was like. I'd like it if some people did the legwork and come to us. Yeah, man. You know, and I yeah. thought I want I want people to come to us, and it seems like as soon as I sort of had that thought, the 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 door for that to happen just opened. Mm. Yeah, door for it in the sense of everyone gravitated to it. Uh, just I I was painting in South End. I was approached by somebody who's. Uh, in charge of most of the assets, uh, like in the town, and was like, "Can you can you do a graph graph event?" And I was like, "Yeah, so I can do it." Uh, and they were like, at the time, they wanted sort of fifteen, sixteen people, nice, pretty pictures, no graph, that sort of stuff. And then I, we we basically said, "Look, we we don't want to be paid, mm. but we want to make it bigger." Yeah, yeah. Um, and so. If you if you allow us to make it bigger, we'll waive our fee and we'll do it for free. And so she agreed. And originally she thought we was having about thirty five people. And then on the first year, uh, we stopped telling her after fifty. I mean, ended up with one hundred and four people painting. And uh, <laughs> she was like, "How many how many people are here anyway?" And it was like one hundred four. She was like. Yeah. And uh, and then the following year we was like, "Well, we did a hundred. Let's do two hundred. And so last this year just gone, um, I believe in terms of the amount of people painting, I might be wrong on this, but I believe it's the largest in Europe festival now. What? Not in terms of size of walls. But in turnout. Um, in turn, turnout of people, I'm pretty sure we, uh, 214. I can't think of an event I've been to in Europe that's more than 214 people painting. So it's pretty epic and it's in Essex. It's epic, it's huge, bruv. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's mad. That's a lot of paint. Yeah, so we were sponsored by Montana, Montana, Montana Cans UK, Big Up Kev, and Global like Kev. Um, Global Art Supplies. Nice. Um, they give us nearly half our paint for free, and even though they give us nearly half our paint for free, it's still, it's still coming at eight and a half grand's worth of paint. So, and you guys, you guys were a deficit, right? So you, you, I mean, this is a this is a no mean feat to get that many people there and supplying the paint. It's got to yeah, come at a cost. So, so we had we we got funding from various different places. Um, it, it, the first year was completely we didn't take any money at all, and this year we still were crying in our beer. Uh, it's still a love, um, much for the love rather than the money affair. Like we we got next to nothing again for running it this yeah. year. Um, but mate, it's a dream come true. Just, just go around my town and see people like Dice yeah. and just like all these people from who I've loved for all of these years. Just suddenly in my town, painting my town. It's just, it's it's mad. What's the locals think? We we're really blessed. Like our local community, absolutely embraced it. They love it, uh, and they're very vocal about it as well. Telling all the council and the rest of it. So hopefully we'll be able to get some funding again, and next year we'll go ahead. But um, yeah, who knows what the future holds? It's it's not easy, but but can anyone? Put on a jam. Is, is there a lot of protocol? Is there some? Is, is there a lot of loopholes in the in the thing you can get away with? Or? You need a very very reasonable council. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which is crazy because South End used to be very anti graffiti, um, but like cabinets change and the rest of it, and different people get voted in, and it seems that the people who are there at the moment. Mm. Um, are quite happy for it to go on. There's a few, obviously, people who are kicking up, kicking up a fuss, but on the whole, they're really forward-thinking. Mm. Look, South and Borough Council, a lot of respect for them, really. They, we, it wouldn't be possible without them. Nice. Um, Maximise that. Big up. Yeah. And so, and you really just need to find those people who are in charge of the purse strings, who are in charge of culture, who are in charge of tourism in your town. Mm. Approach the right people. Make sure that you're just not going there with, you know, I want to do this. Make sure you've got some sort of plan together to show them. And then just, yeah, just go for it. See, I rate that, man. Get up and get stuff done, innit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, yeah. like I say, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without, without them. Also, Ecto as well. Like, all of the online stuff, a lot of most of the emails, all that's picked up by Steve. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of the sort of on-the-ground stuff running around, that sort of thing. So it's, it's a team effort, really. Mm. So I said to someone, it's, it's sort of um, a special a special set of people, really. I've met the right people in the, in the council with the money. Um, you know, me and Steve, we've worked together for years, work really well together. And it just seems like all of these skills that we've picked up over the years, I'm a carpenter, so I've been able to build most of the stuff, have all sort of come together to organise... What we think is is one of the best jams in Europe. Yeah, for real. And I love the what you just said there about your skill sets coming, applying them all, things that you've learned in the over the decades yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I mean, outside of graffiti, I was a, a loft conversion guy. I used to build lofts, um, so I've got all tools and things, knowledge of wood. Eight hundred sheets of plywood we erected. I did see them. So cause if you want to check it out, you can go and check it out on Street Culture TV. We went and did a, uh, yeah. a VIP walk around the place. I saw all the boards and everything, like these mad boxes and yeah, shit. Yeah, we, we unscrewed a lot of it. So a lot of the, obviously, the permanent the, on the buildings, all of that stays, but a lot of the stuff that's on the hoardings and things in the boxes comes down and goes in storage for next year. And when we unscrewed a lot of it, I literally, you know the big bag for life you get from, from, from Aldi's or wherever yeah, yeah, you go? yeah, yeah. yeah. We had like bags of that just full of screws. Like that's how many screws we put in. Whoa. It's just like mental. Because what goes up must come down. That yeah, must yeah, have yeah. been an absolute headache. Two and a half months of of, of full on graft, often 12, 13 hours a day just to get that done. Yeah. People don't ever understand or I don't know, maybe they appreciate it. I don't know, but just the the legwork that goes into making some of these things happen yeah. in, in the scene. It's got to be a passion or it just won't happen. No. Like, it is, it's so much of a cost. It's bang in the middle of summer holidays, so kids and the family, holidays and all that, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it. You've got to love what you're doing and want it to happen, or if it was a job, it just wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen, would it? No. Does it ever get too much for you? Yeah, at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at bet. times it was, yeah. Um, yeah, it took its toll a bit, but yeah, it was well, you know, well worth it. I'll do it again next year if it's, you know, if we really? can. Just on and on. Yeah, I love it. Is that but, the future, my brother? Is that is that a future thing you want to do? I, I, Keep I, it going just till till the legacy's built. I, I want to uh, encourage a vibrant scene like in Essex, uh, like we've got a good history of great graffiti and street art in Essex. I want people to, to but, uh, you know, it sounds, it sounds a bit too, uh, a bit too big of a dream, but like, like Art Basel, places like that, Miami, I want Essex to be my, like Miami, mm. Art Basel. Mm. I want people just to randomly turn up throughout the year, not just on the on the street art mm. graffiti event. I want them to turn up and think, I'm going to make South End a destination I'm going to visit. I want to see some random people doing mosaics or slaps or just stuff, people visiting the town that never used to come. Mm. There was a guy taking some photos and I said, oh, you like, you like what's going on? This was like weeks after the jam. He was like, yeah, yeah. And I noticed he was Dutch. I said, oh, you, you've got a Dutch accent. I said, why have you come here? And he said, oh, I've come for the street art. So this guy's got on a plane from Amsterdam, flown to England, 
purely to take photos of all the stuff that's gone that's on. That's incredible. So that's fucking testament to the bigger dream, any you know what I mean that you had. Yeah. So I, I just that's what I want. I want people to think whenever they think of anything spray can graffiti street art related, I want them to think South End. That's what I want to know. That's what I want. Yeah. 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 What is the, <coughs> what is the, what is the driver behind that? Maybe, maybe the mascot, the person, maybe the the lo, uh, a located area, almost like a beacon. Like, like Art Basel's got that hip hop museum, is it? No, it's graph graffiti graph museum, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Street art museum, something like that. I mean, that's a tourist thing in itself, with or without the graffiti. For sure, right? but that sort of thing will all start popping up, like suddenly, like in Brighton in the early years. Mm. So. Suddenly there was like a real good graffiti scene in Brighton. Some, uh, you know, Arrow, Nema, all of them guys, Fire, yeah. all of them early guys, mm. all smashing it. And, uh, you know, Wreck, She, like, the, the, the list goes on. Fuck is that pissed? Oh, no, they don't get talked about enough. No. And so there was all these people who who were there. And then suddenly all the kids thought, do you know what, when I'm, I'm going to university, I'm going to Brighton. And I want all these kids to think... Where should I go study? I'll go to South End University. And then suddenly what ha happened is then the cultural scene starts to grow without me pushing, mm. without Steve pushing. Mm. And it's organically building. That's what I want. I want it to sort of people to come in and they build the scene just organically. Almost like a curriculum almost. Of yeah. And just entry. hopefully people, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah. Ho hopefully, everyone else likes likes the outcome of it. Obviously, like Shoreditch and places like that are battered. Um, I love that look, but some people in the council might not love that look. Yeah. <laughs> get the London look. Get, <laughs> get, the get, the, get the Shoreditch look. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to that, isn't it? It's, it's almost like so overwhelming to the point that it's lost its impact, becomes the norm. What you're talking about, though, is you're talking about having a place that on the map is the designated area for the... So, like, we're, we're, we're really fortunate to be 40 minutes on a train from London. We've got two direct link train, train lines go straight into London. Where from? From Char South End. Charing Cross. Charing so Crossley. you go to Fenchurch Street right. or you go to Liverpool Street. Both okay. those lines run straight to South End. So I, I want anybody, say for instance, I don't know, there's someone from France thinking, I'm going to go, even if it's with his missus or whatever, I'm going to go and visit London. I want them to then go, well, if we're at London, we might as well visit South End as well. 100%. I couldn't you know, agree more. Do you know what I mean? So oh, yeah, I agree. I just want it on people's radar that we're a destination. But having the, arguably the largest jam known to this point that that's that's part that's part and part that's a good opportunity for the tourist board of of south end to grab sure. it local businesses that sort of thing they, they they love they love it like we had i think i don't think we got the stats back yet but on the first year we had i think over three days we had 60,000 60, extra visitors to the town I think it might have been more than that. What, because of... Because of the street... Dude, uh, over the three days. Over the three days, we had... Because they've got cameras uh. that monitor the foot traffic of the town. And so they basically said, well, on this day last year, where there was 60,000 less people come to the town. So on that weekend, there was an extra footfall of 60,000 people in South End. So I'm is, saying, see, this is just... That's what I'm saying. It's, it's it seems obvious. It seems obvious that get the tourist board on it. I don't know set your shop up. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's what we need now. We need a paint shop. We need a decent place where people can come to South End visit and paint. Um, that's the next step, really. Scared. So it's not just a spectator sport. People can come. They can get paint. They can paint. SVP South End visit and paint. Exactly. That's the store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to get the initials on that one as well. So yeah, we'll edit that bit. Uh, brother, listen, 
I wish you all the fucking best, no worries. My man. Nice one. Real pleasure having you down. Cheers, dude. Definitely going to take a trip to South End. Yeah, so it'll be 1st, 2nd, 3rd of September next year, providing everything goes on and funding's still there. Um, every, every year it's going to be that, that weekend in September. Get it in. Bring it on. So you know now, all right? Stur told you so, all right, you PC. <laughs> Ah, oh, it was wicked. Killer Keller podcast. Our in was out of fashion. Another day, another podcast. Keep it moving like that, people. Remember, crime don't pay. Neither did they. Stir tell you so. Stay lucky, people. Easy. Easy.